بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبي الرحمة والهدى محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين One of the first points is determine what you want to change We're talking here about change What do you want to change? I spoke about change in spirituality but the truth is we need to change many other things sometimes and here we are in universities and we're speaking to an audience of forces here I think it's relevant for me to say even in your studies what do you want to do why are you here what do you want to achieve remain focused and work hard to achieve it your parents or someone somewhere down the line is paying in our slang they say big bucks for you to be here. Well, why it's a fact. Some people work day and night to have their sons and daughters in far off prestigious universities and they're having fun there. Is it, is it fair? So we need to know what needs to be changed. Admit it. Write it down. Ponder. And this is why we have something known as meditation. In the Sharia, some people take it very far and some people ignore it totally. I have a balanced approach and what we say is, every day, consider your deeds. This is based on what Umar ibn Khattab anhu used to say, حَاسِبُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَنْ تُحَاسَبُوا وَزِنُوهَا قَبْلَ أَنْ تُزَنُوا Take account of your deeds before they will be taken account of for you. Allah is going to take account of your deeds and naturally, when you are at a university, if you do not take account of how you are spending your time in the university, come the day of exams and what happens? We start sweating. You know we're all nighters. You know what an all nighter is? <laughs> you don't study, you enjoy your life and suddenly when exams come, we're popping in the pools and we're having the Red Bull. <laughs> red Bull doesn't do anything, believe me. The chlorine in there is synthetic. That's what makes it halal, to be honest. If it was not synthetic, we would be saying something else. But even with that synthetic taurine, the problem we have is it no longer has an effect. I know young boys here, I can see their faces, they probably have 12 and they're still asleep. Mashallah. Mashallah. Sorry, no offense, I'm also about that. So the reality is, we need to know that that is not good enough. We need to take account of our deeds and we need to also weigh our deeds before they will be weighed for us and then we're embarrassed. Why is this the case? If you take account of your own deeds, there is always room for improvement and you will be able to, to keep away or keep at bay regret. But when, when something is taken account of for you, sometimes it might be too late. And this is why we say, my brothers and sisters, very importantly, if you'd like to learn knowledge, if you would like to know, if you would like to increase your knowledge, you need to quit sin. Be conscious of Allah and Allah will teach you. Allah will ensure that you know, your knowledge will increase. You know, a Shafi'i, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, his name was Muhammad Ibn Idris a Shafi'i, the Imam, the great Imam of jurisprudence. He uh, complained once to one of his uh, mentors known as Waki ibn al-Jarrah rahimahullah and he says I complained to Waki ibn al-Jarrah about my memory and Shafi'i had a powerful memory trust me he had a powerful memory and he's still complaining about the memory someone like myself and yourselves perhaps our memories are weak you know we we can't even memorize a phone number to save our lives may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us i think it was the case a few years back when we could do that but technology has made us lazy so a shafi'i with that powerful memory he still complains and he says i complained to waki ibn al-jarrah regarding my the memory and he guided me saying Quit sin, be far away from sin, anything sinful, stay away from it. Because knowledge is the nur that Allah grants those and it does not come together with a person who is sinning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us really. And this is why we mentioned yesterday and we are repeating it today. One of the best gifts of Allah upon us after our Iman and so on is the fact that we have an opportunity to turn to Allah to make amends. We have an opportunity to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to wipe out the bad we've done in the past. Very easy. You admit, you regret, you ask Allah's forgiveness and you promise not to do it again. And it's wiped out. 
That's the promise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made. But if you have usurped the right of a fellow Muslim or a fellow human being, then you need to seek forgiveness from them as well. That's a fifth condition when you have wronged a fellow human. So if there is a sin committed between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, four conditions, we've mentioned them. But if you've added an individual, say I stole someone's money. I can't just say, Ya Allah, I stole these million, this million, but I ask you to forgive me. I won't do it again. I regret and I repent. And you're still going to enjoy that million. And the brother's asking you for the million. You need to return it or you need to tell him, please forgive me. And if he says, okay, then it's fine. If he, if he says no, then you've got a problem because you will either sort the matter out in this world or on the day of judgment, Allah will choose how the justice will be served. So all this we would only know if we took a moment to learn. It is reported that when you forget something, you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens your doors. You remember Allah, Allah will remind you. So when we forget something, it is from shaitan. When you forget something good, it's from shaitan. So this is why we should constantly try and remember that which is good. How to increase your memory. Cut out everything unnecessary from your life. We're not talking of sin. Sin here is supposed to be out anyway. But we're talking of unnecessary. Some people have a habit of sitting and chit-chatting late at night. Following morning, they can't remember how many raka'at in fajr. But there's only two. They can't remember why because your mind has rewinded all night the beautiful stories you had all night and you standing now in salah and you just you can't remember too much on in your head take out some of that this is why nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says min husni islam il mar'i tarkuhu ma la yani one of the signs of a good muslim is that he leaves that which does not concern him it doesn't concern me throw it out today we are at an age where we are bothered about everybody else's life and this is a problem wholesale. Nobody can say I'm not guilty. When we hear a juicy rumor, mashallah, it's like we squeezing the lemon. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Really, we need to be bothered about our own lives. Cut out unnecessary riffraff and see how your memory improves. May Allah open our doors. My beloved brothers and sisters, it's great to be talking to you. And as you know, we all have examinations in life, uh, different types of examinations. And each one has to try very hard. As you know, uh, in a setup where there is a school or a university, uh, at the end of every semester, trimester or term, you would have some examinations in order to qualify you to get to the next level. And as you progress in life, the examinations become more and more difficult. And uh, you would know that without working, we don't achieve. We know the common saying, man jadda wa jadda, whoever works very hard will definitely see the fruit of that particular working. So just like we have people who fail because they did not work hard or they did not understand that the examination would become more and more difficult as time passes, we also have an issue with the Deen where as we progress in life we will have more and more tests and they become more and more difficult until we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ was told, Wa'bud Rabbaka hatta ya'tiyaka al-yaqeen. Worship your Rabb until death overtakes you. Worship your Rabb until the end, right up to the end. Keep on worshipping, continue. Do not stop, do not pause, do not lose hope. In fact, progress and become stronger and stronger. If you take a look at uh, some of the other verses of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, makes mention of فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ You know, with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivering the message, it was not easy and it was difficult. He faced so many challenges. He continued and he persevered. 23 whole years of nubuwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, when you have, uh, subhanallah, subhanallah, you know, the achievement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant each person achievement according to his will, obviously, but also connected to the effort that that particular person makes. If we were to give up suddenly, we would never be able to achieve even Jannah. Imagine a person who reads Salah for 70 years and suddenly the last year, just before they die, they give up their Salah, they throw in the blanket and say, that's it. Such a person has been mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu where a person could be worshipping Allah for so many years and right at the end they, 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 they turn so they are cast into hellfire. 
and a person could be uh, uh, disobedient for so many years and right at the end they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn back to him so they will be from amongst those who go to paradise so it's important for us to know that to give up you don't know how close you are to the end imagine a person digging a tunnel for example and right when they are near the end they suddenly give up thinking that you know what uh, I don't know how long this is going to carry on for had they carried on for a minute longer they would have broken through so with us we need to continue fulfill your salah progress develop don't think for a moment that life is going to become any easier the only thing that will happen is with the development of the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we become more content we understand the nature of the world we understand the nature of the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we enjoy going through them in the sense that we are content we are happy with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so my brothers and sisters not only do I say work hard to achieve here in the dunya and may Allah bless you and grant you success in these examinations but even in the akhirah we ask Allah to bless you to open your doors uh, to prepare for the akhirah it's not uh, an easy task but with the hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala things will be made easy and at the same time with the constant preparation without giving up hope uh, never ever giving up never say no uh, never just throw in the towel by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will achieve and we will achieve great heights